Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am gonna be sharing with you seven ways to change your eating habits in 2024. So it is a new year, it is a fresh start, and I know so many people out there are going to be trying to make healthier changes. And in this video, I wanted to give you some encouragement um, and, and instruction really around how to actually change your health habits when it comes to eating in a way that is actually sustainable and in a way that actually is health promoting. If you guys are new around here, first off, my name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm obviously very passionate about nutrition. I'm also very passionate about sustainability when it comes to a healthy diet and intuitive eating. And if you're not new around here, then you probably already know that these tips are going to be different mostly than what you're going to hear in the mainstream because the mainstream is, or at least when it comes to health advice, it's very much steeped in dieting culture, which is very pervasive and very convincing. Um, also makes a lot of money, but it actually isn't really grounded in principles that are looking out for your health. It's more so based on things that are going to fail so that you come back repeatedly. My goal here on this channel is to share credible nutrition information with you that is also going to be truly helpful and not something that's going to send you on a hamster wheel, but actually help you to make positive, lasting, healthy change in your life. So that being said, let's dive into my tips for you. So my very first tip is to actually define your why. This is extremely important because behavior change is not casual, change is not easy, and you really need to know why exactly you're doing with it and be deeply connected to that because when it does become difficult, you need to be able to use that to propel you forward through those obstacles or through those difficult there is no quick fix. <laughs> the quick fixes are going to be flying around. It's January 2024 and so many people I know are going to be attracted to them, are going to be gravitated towards them because we've been conditioned or taught that we can just do this one thing, try this one diet, um, cut out this one thing from what you typically eat and magically your results are just going to appear and you're just going to like run off into the sunset happy and healthy as ever, but it just simply doesn't work that way. And you know, it's kind of funny. I feel like <laughs> my channel and the content that I share here online gets significantly less views and attention than the, you know, how to lose weight and like the, you know, clickbaity change your life, you know, through this diet, that kind of thing, because unfortunately that's what people are looking for. And that's okay because I don't want to just keep disseminating that same unhelpful information. I want to actually share things that are helpful to people and Actual change is not easy, and that's probably not what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. So looking at this next year and the changes you want to make, let's just say, for example, you want to lose weight. And if you've been around here on my channel, you know that I think focusing on weight loss is a huge waste of time. I've done videos on it um, because weight loss is fickle and it's actually a terrible marker to focus on solely and you're probably just gonna end up failing in the end. But that being said, I know a lot of people are gonna to wanna to lose weight in this new year, so let's just use that as an example. So you wanna lose weight, but why do you wanna lose weight? You actually need to think of like the deeper motivators behind the changes that you want to make, because if you just stop at I wanna lose weight, you're not gonna get very far. I mean, you're not gonna get very far with weight loss in general, because if you actually look at the long-term research, it's, it's not a, a pretty long-term picture, but, if you want to change your habits so you can become healthier, why do you actually want to do that? Is it because you want to feel better right now in your own body? You want to have better digestion, better energy, you want your hormones to be regulated, you want to actually just be like a healthier, more um, you know, productive, energized, healthier person? Um, do you want to be able to, you know, see your kids? you know, graduate from college and get married and then you want to see your grandkids grandkids do those same things. Do you want to be here for a very long time? What are the actual like larger worldview motivations behind those changes you want to make? Because those are going to be way more 
impactful than just focusing on, ah, I just want to, you know, have a smaller jean size or dress size. Having a positive motivator, so something that you're working towards that is going to have a positive impact on your life is a much better focus than just say, you know, I'm scared of, you know, getting XYZ disease or I'm scared of, um, you know, being a certain weight or whatever it is. That's, that's not going to actually help motivate you quite like focusing on something that is positive, that is life-giving, that is going to give you what you want. That is what's going to help you make it through those challenges and actually create the healthy habits that will last and will create real change. My second tip when it comes to creating healthier eating habits this year is a more practical one, and that is actually going through your cabinets and doing a little bit of a clean out. Now, you will know if you follow me that I am not, um, I am not extreme. I am not strict. I'm all for balance when it comes to eating, but what you bring into your home is very important and that cannot be understated. I'm all for balance. I'm all for intuitive eating and, you know, not applying morality to food, but I'm also equally as passionate about proper nutrition and fueling and nourishing your body. There is definitely a delicate balance there that can be done, but if your goal is to eat healthier, more whole, real food this year so that you can nourish yourself better, so much of what you have in your house is going to create that result. So for example, if you typically buy processed foods, if you typically um, you know, get takeout, things like this, and these are the things that you're trying to avoid, then you need to be very careful about what you're actually bringing in. Takeout's a little bit different, we're gonna talk about that in another tip, but especially going through your cabinets and just ridding them of the processed food. Does that mean that you're never gonna have a cupcake again or you're never going to eat white bread again? Like, no, that's not what I'm trying to say, but what you eat or what you bring into your home is going to vastly make up what you consume and things that you might have outside of the house you know, aren't going to have as big of an impact if you're not eating out a ton, which I'm assuming if you're trying to eat healthier and nourish your body better in this new year, then you probably won't be doing a ton of that or you'll, you're at least will be trying not to do a ton of that. There is no um, you know, one size fit all. There's no prescription here for what should be in your cabinets, but you need to go through, you need to assume that responsibility and go through and decide what should be and what should not be there. And then on that same tune, when you go to the grocery store, you need to decide what should go in the cart and what should not go in the cart. Does it have to be perfect? No, but you know, you are in charge here and you have to keep in mind what you bring into your house is what you're, what you are going to eat and what you're probably going to eat a lot of. My third tip is to develop systems that work for you. Again, I am not going to prescribe a certain system for you. That would be more along the lines of a, a dieting perspective, because if I just give you a meal plan or I just give you a diet, I just give you something that's black and white that you can blindly follow. It's just simply not going to apply to your life for the long term. And the, the goal here is to create lasting, healthy behavior change. So you actually have to be the one in the driver's seat deciding what's going to work and what's not going to work because you are the only one that knows your life intimately, that knows how you like to do things, maybe what your weak spots are. So you actually have to be the one to develop how you're going to approach healthy eating. So what I mean by that is, a system that you could develop would be maybe creating some kind of healthy food prep. I've done videos on this before. Um, I think this is gonna be something I continue to do a lot more in the future and just kind of bring you guys along more because you seem to really gravitate toward these videos. And for me, it's incredibly helpful and it's it's one of the cornerstones of the way that I'm able to eat healthy while being you know a busy mom with lots on her plate. So for example, coming up with a system that you are going to just prep some kind of healthy homemade food so that it's in the fridge. Maybe you are going as extreme as making like full freezer meals that you can like ahead of time that you can pull out and make for dinner because you just don't have time or you don't have a lot of energy to be doing that every day or most days. Um, maybe that's just, you know, having cooked proteins or, um, you know, uh, like healthy snacks, fruit and vegetables washed and cut up in the fridge, that kind of thing. You need to come up with what system works for you. 
Ideally for me, I would do this all on the weekend and it's just boom done in one day. For me right now, that just doesn't really suit my current lifestyle. I'm very pregnant. It's hard for me to be on my feet. And it's also just hard for me to be in the kitchen all day long with three little kids who want to play. So, you know, for me, it's more like, okay, how can I fit this in throughout the week and trying to fill in the gaps and do things um, more spread out. You have to figure out what system is going to work for you. And this is also a great, um, what you create your systems on can be identifying what your weak spots are. You can start with that. So if you're looking at your week and you think, I just like never have anything healthy for lunch. I am always just kind of grabbing whatever is available and I'm never really full and then I'm snacking in the afternoon or you know, I go to work and I just end up eating out every day for lunch because I just don't have anything planned. I don't really know what to like, I don't really know what to bring. Like identifying what those weak spots are. Maybe you come home at the end of a long day and you're tired. And a lot of the times you're just like, I'm just going to get takeout because it's just so much easier and I just don't have the energy. So how can you take those weak spots and then create systems around them to solve those problems? So that is where I would recommend at least starting with creating systems. And then you can kind of go from there. My fourth tip is to avoid extremes. And this is another way that I very much differ than a lot of the mainstream messaging you're going to hear around healthy eating because especially this time of year we're inundated with the messages of cut out sugar, cut out carbs, cut out this, um, go on this diet, you know, and everything is, is revolves around some kind of extreme action and extremes are not sustainable. That's simply just a fact. So I want you to approach this again. I can't give you a prescription. I can't give you eat this, 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 and this, or cut this or cut that. And I don't really want to, but you have to decide what is extreme to you. So you might be really tempted to cut out sugar, right? But are you still going to not be eating sugar? in a year, in three years, in five years. Um, so maybe that's actually not the best thing. Maybe it's truly like a short-term thing um, and you, you're planning on it to be a short-term thing, but most of the time we end up making these extreme changes and they're just unsustainable. So instead of like learning from that experience and like drawing anything that's like fruitful out of it, we just quit and we just go back to what we were doing before. So now we're just back at square one. So no real progress was made. And in fact, we may have actually taken a few steps back because now our ego took a hit. We feel sorry for ourselves that we weren't able to do it. And you know, this brings in all kinds of like a negative mentality that then might just spiral you even further backward. So I want you to ask yourself if this is something I'm not going to continue long term, is it even worth doing now? And typically the answer is going to be no. And then just one other extreme I really wanted to point out because it's just so important is you need to eat enough. Let me say that again. You need to eat enough. So much of what goes into trying to eat healthier is restrictive. So maybe it's restrictive on a certain macronutrient. Maybe you're going to eat less carbs or maybe you're going to eat like hardly any um, you know, sh sugar that's not a macronutrient. But again, it, a lot of times it has to do with specific foods, but it can also just be generalized restriction, eating less in general. Maybe you're trying to lose weight. Maybe I don't know what you're, what you're trying to accomplish, but so many people end up under eating in the name of health and improving their health. And then they're just hungry. <laughs> and what happens when you are underfed and you're not bringing in enough nourishment, you're not bringing in enough like literal kilocalories that your body uses to turn into ATP, which is your energy source. If you're not doing enough of that, if you're not bringing enough of that in, then you are simply going to be sending, setting off so many alarm bells, like biological alarm bells, these systems that our bodies have in place to keep us from starving. And when those are going off, when those signals are happening, all of these other things I'm talking about are going to become very difficult because you are going to be so hyper fixated on food. So many of your goals are going to feel more difficult. And this is why weight loss is so hard. It's because we're not designed to go on starvation diets to lose weight. We are designed to keep homeostasis. So your body's going to fight you at every turn while you're trying to do this. So you need to eat enough. Eating less isn't necessarily healthy. 
depends on the situation we're talking about because overeating and eating more than you need is certainly a real thing. But I'm not saying eat more just for the sake of eating more. I'm saying eat enough. My fifth tip for you is to actually write down what you want to accomplish. This kind of goes back to your why with um, my first tip, but actually putting pen to paper and writing down what you want to do. This is a very general tip that goes for any goal setting whatsoever, but I wanted to include it because I know that, I mean, it's literally been proven that it is a very effective way to connect yourself to your goals and to really help you take ownership of your goals and to have a lot more motivation around your goals. So just to have like the thought, you know, flitting around in your head of like, oh, you know, I really do want to be healthier this year. Like I really, I really want to make a change. Like I don't, I don't want to live this way anymore. I don't want to feel this way anymore. But actually taking a pen to paper or writing it down on a you know, laptop or phone or whatever, but actually putting it down, putting the thoughts down so they're out of your head and onto another you know, medium, that is going to have a big impact on um, helping you to achieve those goals. And it's also going to help you, it's gonna force you to you know, write down what it is you're actually trying to accomplish so that you can get more specific. My sixth tip for you is to focus on progress over perfection. Perfection is not real, right? Like we are never going to be, we're never going to have the perfect diet that lasts into eternity. We're never going to have the perfect body. Our bodies are fluctuating and changing all the time. It's just an illusion and I don't want you to get stuck in that trap. So focus on making the small, healthy behavior changes one at a time, baby step by baby step, and just focus on the progress. And so much of what you know you see in diet culture with certain diets or weight loss programs or whatever it is, it's very much focused on the goal. The end goal is the end all be all. And you know, if you fall off the wagon or if you don't achieve it, then you just fail and it's done and now you are just feeling terrible about yourself. But to make true change and not you know, have some kind of diet prescribed and then you follow it and then you fall off, true change that comes from your own design because this is your life and that's what's going to make the biggest impact um, and it's what's gonna make the most sense, that change is gonna take time. And that change is not going to just be exponential with no bumps in the road. So focus on progress over perfection and always keep that why in mind, that broader view of why you're doing all of this. Because again, that's what's going to kind of anchor you into this journey and it's going to keep what's most important at the forefront so that you don't end up just, you know, I'm just gonna try this because it's easy and you know this diet sounds great and people have all these fabulous results, but where are they in five years? Nobody knows. My seventh tip for you is to make more food yourself. And I purposely put this last after the progress over perfection because this is definitely an area where you wanna focus on progress over perfection if really you are not someone who makes a lot of food. Maybe you, um, you, know, you cook dinner here and there, or, but you, you, know, you, you eat out a lot and you grab a lot of processed foods and you're not really making things from scratch or homemade, um, then this would be like a massive change, right? And this is something that we wanna take literally, like no pun intended, bite by bite. But making your own food yourself has so many benefits to it. First off, you're able to control the ingredients. And if you're making it yourself from scratch, you're not going to have all of these strange additives and thickeners and emulsifiers and all of these things that end up in processed foods so that they have a longer stable shelf life. You don't have those in your kitchen. So you're gonna end up making pretty wholesome, um, you know, uh, I, I hate to use the word clean, but you know, simple food, recipes that are going to be nourishing that aren't going to come with you know the um the negative downsides of all the additives that are added into processed food you're most likely going to be working with fresh ingredients again these things don't have like real food does not have a super long shelf life so that right there is going to up the nutrient density of those foods because they haven't been manipulated and processed um, to a point where they can last for you know a unnatural amount of time but also making your own food really connects you 
to the process. It makes you appreciate food more. Um, and it really kind of brings in this whole extra layer of pleasure and satisfaction to eating, which is so huge and cannot be understated because Food can provide so much joy. It can bring so much richness to life. But if you don't have that and you're just kind of eating pragmatically, you probably aren't going to be really enjoying this new change nearly as much as you could be. And you know, as everybody knows, if you're enjoying something, you are so much more likely to keep doing it and to continue on. So, you know, maybe cooking really is just like not your thing. Like you just don't care to do it. That actually brings more stress into the situation for you and it makes it less enjoyable. Then there certainly are ways to buy high quality food. Um, it's a little bit harder, it's a little bit more expensive, but it can be done. But I would challenge you to take it one step at a time and try and master making one thing yourself. Uh, maybe it's just getting better at cooking dinner yourself instead of grabbing the takeout. Maybe it's, you know, I am going to start um, making my own yogurt because I love to eat yogurt, but if I make it at home, it's just literally milk is the only ingredient. And then I can, you know, maybe add some maple syrup or some fruit or some honey or whatever to make it more more delicious and you know like one thing at a time and if you do this over the next year and you just kind of take it bit by bit by the end of the year you will be amazed at how much you can um, make yourself easily you know where it doesn't actually feel like this big insurmountable task and that alone will have a massive impact on how you approach and enjoy food those are my seven tips for you i hope that you guys found this video helpful if you did, I would absolutely love for you to share it with someone, a friend or a family member that you think would benefit from it too. This is definitely the kind of information you're not seeing as much online. You certainly aren't being inundated with this kind of information this time of year, but this is really what people need to hear if they truly want to make healthy change for the better and for the long term. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have yet to subscribe, I would absolutely love for you to join my little community here on YouTube. This is a lot of the kind of content that I share um, along with just general like healthy eating on a day-to-day -day basis, what I'm eating, how I prep for healthy, um, for healthy eating, how I actually make it doable, along with some other lifestyle content as well. So I hope that you will join us here. But that is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.